All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I actually woke up at like 7 a.m. Now it's like 7.40 a.m. I haven't even opened, turned on the light above me. Uh, I mean, it's actually pretty bright already, and now that we're going into summer over here, you know, um, I prefer to actually keep heat sources off. Because <laughs> believe it or not, when it's summertime, I have the light on, it actually gets a lot hotter. So, because obviously, you know, sunlight and the artificial light generate heat, because that's exactly what light is, heat. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get into the whole physics of that stuff. So anyway, I wanted to get this video out before we do like the normal format of like projects and stuff because you know now that Terra Luna and UST is more or less pretty much de uh, pretty much dead uh, and Do Kwan might actually face some kind of legal problems because uh, I actually tweeted out from Watcher Guru that um, the South Korean Parliament, so their version of the Congress, <laughs> is actually calling him in to testify. Yo, what the f happened? All right. So uh, um, now, as long as he didn't do anything shady, especially with the bail out the whales thing, I think Do Kwan should be okay, right? And then he'll just simply say, "Hey, I did exactly what I said I would do. It didn't work, all right? Because he did sell the Bitcoin reserves to prop up UST. It just it just happens that he didn't have nearly enough because Terra there was just too much Terra in the system, right? Like what, twelve billion, right?" But he only had what is wrong with this shirt? He only had reserves to cover about three point five billion or one and a half billion at the current market rates. So and day stable coin appears to be uh, under the same kind of attack. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I have the stable coin video that I made like I guess last week, right? And I said in that video I'm going into Terra UST, but you should look at the others. Well, it turns out you're gonna have to actually look at the others, cause I don't know why I don't want to take down that video and make a new one. I just went over too much stuff, cause I'm gonna say the exact same thing, but I'm just gonna say, hey, just use the safe stable coins. So the one that's actually getting a lot of flack that I've always seen over the years is Tether, right? So okay, so how do you know if a stable coin's going to go to shit? Like like Terra Luna and um, what's the other one? Day Stablecoin and whatever other failed stuff, All right? And then how? Uh, and then which one will actually survive, right? So I know Dai and BUSD will work, especially BUSD because that's actually collateralized. Uh, I already checked in the, you know, I should. There was no point in me checking USDC Circle because it was a pain in the ass to find the reserve report because it's actually not on their website. They just have like an accounting firm that says, hey, we have everything back. So, you know, I mean, I should find it. What is USDC backed by? Let me see if I can actually find the breakdown. Uh, I mean, I yeah, that's the problem. I keep getting this. It's not on their Circle website. Uh, I mean, it might be. Let me see. Total circulation, because their audit report doesn't actually say anything. We need to see the actual breakdown of the reserves, because that is the only thing that matters. If a stable coin does not have actual reserves, pretty much just like what happened to Terra Luna and probably Day stable coin, your, your stable coin is a uh, shit coin. It's not going to work. It's going to actually fail. And then, of course, super predators are going to see that, and they're going to do a short attack on you, right? And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, I like how you don't actually, yeah, see, this is just very annoying. Uh, okay, all right, so that's, yeah, it's what I figured. There was a link that showed you the down thing, and I don't remember the web domain in my Google Chrome. And unfortunately, this thing... It's, it's not this site, but I'm hoping, yeah, see, it just tells you what it is, but not the exact, the exact thing. God, this is so annoying. What is, okay, USDC reserves breakdown. Okay, can you show me the effing thing? Okay, this might be it. This might be it. No, this is a different site, but this might have what we're looking for. Okay, no, it doesn't have anything. 
composition. How, okay, this unfortunately this thing is really old, so okay, this doesn't help. Uh, like caching, caching. No, this one's too old. This is from July twenty twenty one. Oh man. Hercoca tells Kyrie its coin is 100 pack by Kyrie in short term, yes, as long as you nice stable coins. Okay. Well, he testified before, whatever. Yeah, but that's, yeah, but that's basically it. He has cash, and then the rest is one to three month treasuries. Alright, but I'm trying to find a link that actually t shows you what it is, and I'll put that in the YouTube thing, because that is what matters, right? Um, yeah, the only thing I see are like these old. Uh, no, no, great, now I'm getting like, uh, actually, how does Circle make money off this? I assume it's through, like, they cut, is it makes through trade of Bitcoin or over counter markets and digital exchanges. Uh, okay. Okay, so they take a cut of, like, when people change USDC into something else. That's it, yeah, that's fine. They, they basically pl uh, play broker, right? Like, you know how people buy and sell stocks and you have to use a brokerage? That's what USDC is. Uh, demand for sale, stable coins constantly exceeds supply. So people still want to charge to uh, lend it. Yeah. Stable coins are always in demand. Uh, all right. I'm getting kind of sick and tired of this. Because the site, the link that was there is not there, but either way, I know that USDC is actually f pretty much 100% fully backed. Because they don't actually have, see here in Tether, they have something a little different. USDC does not have any of this. They have cash, bank deposits, and they have treasury bills. That's it, all right? And these treasury bills have to be short term, one to three months. So I guess the only potential problem that I can see with US dollars circle all right usdc is there's a liquidity crunch and their short-term debt is you know still stuck in the you know one to three month treasury yields so let's see now the reason why people like to crap on tether right you can see the breakdown of you know you think that's chinese dollars that's gold i think and then that's euros right but it's mostly in dollars all right what Tether is backed by is, let's take a look. Uh, okay, so this is as recent as December 31st, 2021. Yeah, so like Circle, they only report their reserves like once every six months, so twice a year. Reserves breakdown. Okay, 6.38% uh, investing in stuff, 5.27% secured loans, none to affiliate entities. 4.61% in corporate bonds, funds, or precious metals, all right? So that might actually be okay, specifically the precious metals part, because we, because the only time that this thing breaks down is when you have a liquidity problem, right? When people really need your dollar and you don't have it, then what actually happens is uh, you actually have a real problem on your hands. <laughs> you have you have economic collapse. Cash and oh, and the other thing is when people try to dump on you, you need to be able to buy it back immediately, right? So make the short attack basically uh, nullified, because what that's what the happened with Terra Luna, right? Everyone, someone, super predators, right? Super evil rich people bought a lot of Terra Luna or Terra, right? But basically they had a lot of stuff, right? And then they sold it all at once, right? And because they borrowed it, you know, they paid it, they they paid back the exact same loan essentially. So whether the BlackRock Citadel thing is true or not, I mean, they say no. I think you and I know that they did do it, but they're they're literally the elite, so there's nothing's gonna happen to them. So, you know, whatever. But the point is, the reason why Terra couldn't keep up is because they could not actually they didn't have enough reserves to buy back the short attack. So you know, you get effed, right? So yeah, because it's pretty obvious. 3.5 billion dollars or so worth of reserves, 12 billion dollars worth of Terra, uh, Terra UST. All right, there's a nine billion dollar gap or, or 8.5 billion gap. So that, so what happens to all that money? It's actually fake money. So you take it out. And that's what happens. Right. So Tether, in Tether's case, this is the same thing. All right. 
So you have money market funds, which is 4.55%. That's actually a problem. Commercial paper and certificates of deposit. This could actually be a problem too, because in the 2008 uh, real estate crisis, this is exactly what happened. The commercial paper market died because there was no liquidity. So the debt went to shit. So this is a problem. So the real reserves of Tether. So I consider these very bad. All right, because remember, we know from Greg Manorino that when this implodes, the U.S. debt market, all right, this 10-year yield, everything's going to tank with it. Real cryptocurrencies will go. I'm actually going to change this to Coin Market Cap because I, don't, I know Coin Gecko had the uh, little domain hack, and I don't want to deal with that. I mean, it's obviously fixed now, but you know, like, yeah, Coin Market Cap has been working anyway. So, is there like a dark theme of this site? No. So anyway, so the commercial paper market died. That was the next thing to go after the, you know, mortgage-backed securities and all the, you know, other crap happened in America. <clears throat> and when this died, the commercial paper market, all the big corporations and starting with the insurance companies like AIG went down. Because what a commercial paper market is, is basically... When you're running a multi-hundred million dollar or multi-billion dollar company, you actually need to pay expenses, right? Electricity, uh, employee salaries especially, and you know, the normal stuff that you normally have to pay. The problem is, because you're such a big corporation, it takes like the, like usually, there's something called like, I forgot what it's called, the 30 or 60 or 90 day pay cycle. That's not the term, but that's what it is. So you only so a big corporation only gets their money every 30 to 60 to 90 days. So what corporations have to basically do is go into something called the commercial paper market and borrow money at very small low interest rates to pay for their employees and they keep doing that. And then they pay it back off immediately when they get the cash, right? You know, every 30, 60, 90 days. So there's like a small time and and here in America everybody gets paid usually every 2 weeks. But obviously, you can have temp workers and people coming and going all the time anyway. So. <clears throat> so the point is, when this commercial paper market seizes up and there's no more cash to pay your employees and stuff, everything starts breaking down. So, And, and that's what happens. Uh, cash and bank deposits. I mean, you need cash on hand, but bank, bank deposit. Oh, okay, well, that's actually cash in the bank. So then you have treasury bills, which is basically half of the you know, half of this 80, excuse me, 84%. So the minimum term that I think is like one month to three months, right? That's usually what you see here. But I think they do have a two month there and like, you know, one week or something, right? So you gotta stay very liquid. But the problem is, like Greg says, when everybody starts panicking, right? Everyone bolts for the door and it's very instant, right? It's very quick. So Tether could actually be a problem. So I'm still going to do, right now I'm actually in Tether. Oh yeah, I got to bring this up. Right now I'm actually in this one. Because right? I like Binance Chain. Right? So I always just, you know, and I like Pancake Swap. So I just stick with Pancake Swap. Maybe uh, in the future I'll reevaluate and check a different chain out. But let's see, where are you? I probably passed it. No, that's Buy Swap. Buy Swap is actually pretty good, but I like Pancake Swap. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is the one that I'm in. U.S. T uh, Tether Binance Dollar. Now, for some reason, the Beefy Finance has a constant problem displaying the trading APR. So the APR is look really low. But what you actually have to do is go ac actually go to the source web uh, pancake. You know, I better actually get the real pancake swap because I know I'm going to encounter like a, a fake Google ad website and then like, you know, it's going to hack my computer and take all my stuff. All right. So USDT, BUSD. Oh, great. Now I have to scroll. <clears throat> so here you can actually see the real APR. It's 17.09% a year. <clears throat> and it's mostly boosted by the 2.5x multiplier. So technically, Beefy is supposed to be displaying... Where did it go? Beefy is supposed to be... This is very annoying. Uh, there you are. 
Beefy is supposed to be uh, much higher, well, at least higher than that, so... I'm going to put my money in, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to actually calculate and see if this is actually inaccurate. I mean, I checked Reddit, they say that it is, and there's there's got to be a reason why there's 2.56 million locked into this. So I'm pretty sure people actually understand that it's just a display bug. Yeah, because it's slightly less than what you see here on PancakeSwap, right? This has 306 million. Um, oh, there we go. This has 306, uh, basically 307 million, you know, uh, TVL. So, yeah, but basically, as soon as I see this happen, actually, in fact, there's a good probability that when we see this thing spike like crazy, I think that you're going to have a little bit of time. You might have a little bit of time. I'm already assuming that Tether's going to immediately go to 90 cents, right? It's going to actually start depegging. It's not going to be immediate because there is a lot of actual real Tether cash backing Tether. Like tether cash, U.S. dollars, like real actual U.S. dollars backing this. Um, and then I'm gonna actually try to look for a USDC circle uh, break asset breakdown at that point, and also see what they do because they might actually be uh, under a little bit of pressure too. All right. Uh, but with that being said, let's see. Yeah. So so will tether implode? There's a very big risk that the answer is actually yes. All right. Even though this thing says 84% of all their reserve is actual cash and other short-term deposits and commercial paper, I mean, a, this is a real problem. You don't, you have like 41%, so basically a little less than half of this 84% in commercial paper and money market funds. That's the, that's gonna be the first thing to go when this thing goes, because why, because why would you? Because basically, how does it work, right? How do bonds actually work? Debt is bonds. That's really what bonds are. They're debt, right? But we call it a bond because you're on the other side of the debt. You're the one that's lending money. So what do you get back in return? You get a bond, right? Because the guy who borrows the money from you, he's taking on debt with a promise to pay you back. So on your, so you as the lender, you're, you're holding bonds, right? So it's the exact same thing. So why would you, so let's say you're doing a money market fund, you're getting 7% APY, or you're doing commercial paper, you're obviously getting like a fraction of a percent a year, right? Because commercial paper yields are obviously very, very low, right? And of course, certificates of deposit will be somewhat similar to whatever, uh, whatever this is, right? But the thing is, certificate of deposits have fixed yields as well, I believe. You have to... You have to auto renew it. So your CD will be paying that crappy rate for like six months, 12 months. It's actually very illiquid unless you get the very, you know, very short term stuff. But even then, the CD will basically be like your one, three month treasury bills. A lot, the markets will basically die in like two days, right? You can't, you can't wait a month to get your money back, right? And then, you know, buy back your tether, right? If you're tether. So it, it is kind of a problem. It is a problem. But let's just say we don't have to worry about the treasury bills. Let's just consider that actual cash. Because technically it really is cash. Because you get, because, you know, when you buy a one month U.S. treasury uh, bond, in one month you get back your original principal plus whatever little bit of interest that you get, right? Whatever, which is obviously the yield. <clears throat> um, yeah, I guess we could close that. I'll keep this link open though. I'll put that in the YouTube description. So commercial paper is paying a crap APY. Now you can go in the open market and, you know, let's say you could buy a one month and it's paying like 3% a year. That's way more than this. So what happens to the value of this commercial paper debt? It goes basically to zero, all right? And then, of course, there's no liquidity because there's no actual dollars to settle your account. So then, you know, we have 2008 again. This is the exact same thing, all right? You're going to have this exact problem in uh you know really cryptocurrencies and the tether market right and that's kind of the reason why i'm like 50 50 on whether cryptocurrencies are going to go up or down right when this thing ultimately implodes greg manorino thinks that crypto will skyrocket it's supposed to but here's the thing we just went through terra luna right it's very obvious that when ter that terra luna brought down the entire crypto market because everybody was dumping their non-terra related assets to cover their losses and there's no liquidity in the, there's basically no liquidity in the system. 
So when there's no liquidity in the system, what happens? Everything sells off because they're trying to desperately get some kind of liquidity. All right? Because... And I, I know this because I lived through it, and actually you and I probably lived through it in 2008. In fact, I went, when I went I was still in college, that was exactly all that we studied and researched, right? We, we, dis, we basically did an autopsy on the financial markets. So I don't know, man. I'm still 50-50, but if I had to hold stable coins, it's definitely going to be USDC, DAI, and BUSD, and that's it. That's it. I need something that's fully backed 100% by actual cash and then of course some treasury bills because you know don't forget the federal reserve is constantly printing dollars right look at let me look at this look at these money charts all right this is updated once a month but you know this is going to go a lot higher so the problem is if you hold cash and bank deposits you know you actually lose money because of inflation and low interest rates and of course devaluation of the dollar right thanks to the federal reserve so you kind of have to buy treasury bills. So it's like, yeah. So I don't know. For now, it's probably okay to do Tether. But I personally will be bailing out as soon as this, uh, as soon as you see this happen. All right. As soon as you see this happens. Um, all right. So when does this implode? I don't know. All right. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So... So the hate on Tether is somewhat a little overblown, but it's not without justification. There is actually a danger with Tether, right? So, and Tether was nice enough to actually tell us the actual numbers. So, yeah. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do. I'm going to, for now, do Tether, Binance Dollar, right? But I will bail out of that, right, when this happens, right? When... You know, 10-year yield, and really all these things go like boom, 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 like Greg Manorino says, right? 3.5, 4%, 4 4.5%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 9%. Then I know, then we all know, dump everything, go into the dollar. Like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dump everything, go into the dollar. Well, well, I'm not going to dump all my sphere, for example, but I'm going to dump, like, the vast majority of my stuff and go straight into stable coins. I may not even, I may not even decide... I may not even, if I have a lot, let's say I had like $3 million, I'm not even going to LP it. I'm just going to go straight up uh, dollar, like Binance dollar, USDC, and then DAI. Like I'll spread it out, right? Because you never know. Maybe USDC, BUSD, and DAI might just go poof too. I mean, the likelihood of that I think is very low, but you really never know. Hey, that actually rhymes. And on top of that, if it's done pro, if these stable coins, right, the good ones, USDC, DAI, BUSD, are done properly, and there's a liquidity crunch, then the demand for a stable coin will be much higher. So that might actually push the value of USDC, DAI, and BUSD, like the real stable coins, the ones in the world that are actually legit, to like two dollars, three dollars, because everyone's like, I desperately need dollars, right? And then that's how you make money off of that too. And then you know, when the when things start settling down, you take your two dollar, three dollar USDC coin, all right, your overvalued dollar, and you start buying up. You you buy the hell out of that dip, right? You know, imagine if Dog Coin like or XRP, because like I constantly see XRP in my Twitter feed now. So imagine if XRP crashes to like a fraction of one penny, and fundamentally XRP is a solid coin. Yeah, you can bet I'm gonna buy the hell out of that too. I'll just I'm gonna go on a buying frenzy, and so will you. So, you know, this is how you get prepared for, like, you know, potential disasters. And as crappy as Terra Luna's situation is, it provides very valuable lessons. So, you know, there's always opportunity in any situation, but you just got to look for it, you know. And then, you know, rub your hands like I'm doing now and prepare. So, anyway, I assume this video is pretty long. Yeah, it's 24 minutes and 10 seconds. But we went over a lot of really important stuff, all right. And I still have to actually... Uh, current balances, um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, but I'll have to actually, uh, try to look into the USDC reserves breakdown a little more, um, but, I mean, I know that there, but I, I have to find that link, but, you know, I'll, I'll find it, so, I mean, if I find it, I'll actually maybe just update this YouTube description, I'll just simply add the link, so, anyway, if you, uh, oh, yeah, like, subscribe, share this video around. Uh, thank you again to all the new and old people watching this video. Make sure you share this with all your friends and family, and let's keep growing this channel, all right? Because the more that people know about this, 
you know, the better that will, you know, help people out. And of course, you know, we'll make more money, right? Don't keep this to yourself, right? I don't like selfish, greedy uh, people, right? Because you're, you're, you're literally a parasite. And it actually hurts us too, right? You know, so just get this out there, all right? Um, but in the meantime, uh, make sure that you compare these APYs with the actual source platform because it tell, Beefy tells you. And then go on that platform and find the liquidity pair or single stake if you're going to do single stake and find out what the real APY is on that site. And then theoretically, based on what it should be, based on what Reddit and my own personal experience, I'm going to confirm that later in a few hours when Beefy you know, does its daily compound. Your APY should be higher than the base platform because of the compounding effect, right? You know, but not that much more. So, all right. Thanks. I'll see you in the next project. I don't know what it is because I'm going to immediately start the research after. I just want to get this out there. So, yep. Happy uh, stable coin farming because I definitely will be.